Hello and welcome everyone to Classic Corsa Cup here today for the commentary of the Brazilian Grand Prix, which is actually uh, the Senna Grand Prix. That's what we're going to be calling it here today at Brazil. So this round is Group 1 and Group 2 together uh, for a very special round around here at Brazil. Now, this track is very interesting. It's had a lot of history in its past and taking us away is part of that history. And the reason why we're calling it the Senna GP is because we're driving one of the cars that our famously legend uh, Ayrton Senna drove to the win actually in 1991. And so the car we will be driving is the McLaren 1991 edition. So super excited to be traveling with this phenomenal car uh, here today at Classic Corsa Cup. Now, everyone, welcome to the commentary. Welcome to another Classic Corsa Cup race here today in the comms booth for the uh, first time, I guess, as us to as a pairing is myself, Broomhandle914. And joining me in the comms booth here today is Ferret. Ferret, welcome to the comms booth here today at Classic Corsa Cup. We're here at Brazil, a rainy Brazil, and these very classic F1 cars uh, on this very phenomenal circuit. Uh, how are you thinking into this race? What are you thinking is going to happen uh, in today's race? Well, first of all, it's Brazil. It's raining, so anything can really happen. It's um, it's a very tough course, especially for uh, in the rain, uh, rain to handle some of the just fast sweeping corners. As you can see, that um, I think uh, Percy there has gone out at at bleachers at ten fifteen. He must have clipped the inside wall uh, near the pits, but he is out currently. So anything can really happen. Yeah, we're in for a very interesting race here today uh, at Brazil. Uh, it's also raining as well, so a lot of these guys are having uh, a lot of issues with getting the car stable, especially in these brand new uh, cars that we have not really raced in uh, an official classic car race, but I'm sure a lot of these guys will be practicing their lap times on track. Now, we did see a crash, as you mentioned. Uh, Percy was one of those guys that did retire. I do believe Tapaxter was also involved in that incident. Uh, they may have collided. As we're watching on board with Stanley, who is right behind Tasmanian Devil. Both are uh, kind of in formation at this moment, as uh, we can see those beautiful classic cars uh, at the McLaren, of course. These 1991 McLarens. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be a very interesting race to see how this works out for everyone. Uh, at the moment, I quickly want to mention Blim Machine is on pole. Our, of course, commentator from Group 2 and our racer from Group 1. He's racing in today's race and sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. But, Ferret, I want to ask you a quick question. Uh... Do you like this track, and what's your thoughts about this Brazilian Grand Prix in these classic conditions uh, out with these phenomenal cars, and of course with the rain as well? What would you say about this track? Well, personally, it's not one of my favorites, uh, straight up. I find it uh, a very tough uh, circuit to race on, uh, but it's one of those things, it's just iconic. It's an iconic race. It's been a, a part of F1 history for a very long time. Uh, these cars are the exact the, the perfect car for this kind of tribute race that you've got here but with the rain it makes the conditions a lot harder um, or the racing the track conditions a lot harder it makes it makes him feel like a lot more strategy calls from the drivers and a little bit more caution when making their moves so it's going to be it's going to be a tough one yeah, I'm expecting the same thing uh, from all these guys as well. Uh, it will be an interesting race. As you said, it's very historic. One of the most phenomenal Grand Prix on the calendar. Uh, I think it's just got to say, um, when everyone thinks of Formula 1, when people think of motorsport, uh, they think of particularly about three tracks, Belgium, Monaco, and Brazil. And there's, of course, many other historic tracks, but this is by far probably one of the most uh, phenomenal and uh, tracks that I think a lot of people look forward to. And that's also why we're here uh, at Classic Cup for the final two rounds uh, of the championship because this is just a historic track and a lot of people enjoy it. And of course, this is Classic Cup. So uh, right now, I quickly want to uh, mention uh, the standings and, uh, or not the standings, but the uh, point system we have in this race. Now, uh, if you've been watching our Classic Corsa Cup uh, videos, our, uh, our races from Group 1 or Group 2, uh, you know that we use the Classic uh, Point System. Now, as you know, 
uh, you may have known that uh, this is the final two rounds. I mentioned it. Ferret mentioned it as well. We've all been kind of talking about uh, bringing this up to this uh, final two rounds of Brazil. Anyway, the point is I wanted to mention, uh, since this race um, is kind of a one-off race, not really part of the official uh, Red Bull v. McLaren battle that we have been seeing with the 2010 cars, uh, we will reduce the points to only the top three. Now that you may think that's really strange to see only the top three scoring points. Now, uh, this sounds a little interesting, but believe me, it will be interesting to see these guys going head to head to try and finish in the top positions. I think this will see, uh, this will make it, uh, make drivers, um, have a little bit of a battle out there. And that's exactly what we want to see in league racing. So, uh, the point system that we do have first place, will grab three points, only three points. Second place, will grab two points and third place will grab We'll grab one point. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, and so the top three are only scoring points in this Grand Prix. Kind of interesting, but uh, I think it'll be very fun to see. Yeah, it just means that it is vital for the drivers to then battle for those top three places. So hopefully we might see some good battling throughout the race. You're absolutely correct. It'll be very interesting to see how, uh, how this works out with all these guys on track, uh, I think the the fighting for those three positions at the top will be crucial for these guys to uh, go wheel to wheel more often and push the boundaries of these cars. Uh, we're not particularly sure what the conditions are like, so hopefully we will see some battling because at this moment it is raining and uh, we are in qualifying, of course, which this is only qualifying for the race. And this is also for drivers to get a little bit more practice. Uh, we were gonna do a one shot 25% race, um, but we decided to do an 18 minute short race, uh, and a, um, a 25% race. And the reason why we're doing this short qualifying is because, uh, we will be, um, uh, sorry, I lost my words there. Um, because the thing is guys, is that we want to be able to have these guys practice a little bit more because these cars are so unfamiliar to a lot of these people. And so that's the reason why we're doing that. Now, Ferret, uh, you've mentioned that this is not your favorite circuit, uh, but this is a historic circuit as well. Um, there's lots of different types of turns for around here and different types of uh, cornering for uh, these different types of cars and this entire track as well. Um, how do you make these corners play out? Do you think where uh, what I'm asking basically is where is the best place to make overtakes and uh, how how do you think these guys are going to cope with these interesting sort of S turns and these sharp turns that kind of come out every once in a while? Uh, sorry, that's very good yeah. um, question really because it's with these uh, these cars that don't have DRS so they can't make the uh, the most out of all these straights but I would say between uh, the, home, uh, the, the home straight, the pit straight should be the one where everybody makes their moves because if you're getting a toe that's where you've got to be, you've got to get them in before turn one uh, and also before turn four uh, battling wheel-to-wheel uh, -wheel battling through the curves of 6-7 all the way up to turn 12 it's going to be really tough with the tight twist and uh, roads and it is quite narrow it's a very narrow circuit so it's not ideal to overtake at those kind of corners yeah it will be interesting to see how it works out with uh, all these guys taking the different turns uh, with these sort of these cars as well uh, it's a very interesting sort of track as you mentioned uh, with these different sort of um, turns that we're, we're uh, expected to have for around here. Uh, so it will be interesting to see how it plays out in the race here today. I uh, was just seeing Brooksy there put a 130.1. Absolutely astounding time in the wet in these cars. Yeah, and I think you you know Brooksy a little bit more than me as uh, he's a new driver to Classic Cup. Uh, he looks mighty quick, uh, especially challenging drivers like Tasmanian Devil who are battling for the World Championship in Classic Cup. Uh, do you think this guy's going to be setting our pole position to mark here today? Do you think he's the fastest driver on track? What, what would you say about him? Well, personally, uh, well, I've seen him. I've seen him race on Brooksy himself. is a very competent driver. Um, Although the other guy that uh, came over with Brooksy, uh, Percy, uh, I would say he's actually a little bit quicker. Unfortunately, he had a little incident with Stanley at turn 15, 
Um, Stanley, I took Umpley admitted to knocking him off a little bit, but it's wet conditions, it's quite difficult for Tolkien to judge on that, but I would be... Um, I think it's going to be close between Brooksy and Tasmanian Devil, uh, but then at the race itself, uh, don't be surprised if uh, Tay Paxter and Percy start making their way through the pack. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it works out uh, with a lot of these guys on track. Uh, there's so many that can put up a fight. Uh, as you said, I think Brooksy and Taz at the moment, uh, those are the two fastest drivers we're seeing on track. There's a many drivers. Actually, i got to say, every single one of these drivers right here has showed they have extreme pace, and I think we're in for a very good Grand Prix. Uh, we don't have that many drivers in the race. As you can see, only have nine. Uh, a short turnout here today. Uh, as it has been for quite some time uh, in the Classic Cup. Not many drivers uh, being able to make the races. Um, but that doesn't mean that we will have a, uh, a bad race. That, uh, that means that we'll have a great race, actually, I gotta say. Because, uh, as I mentioned, as Ferret mentions, I think there's a lot of very talented drivers out there that have the pace to be able to take it to the top of the table. Now, you mentioned that Percy was really quick. Now, he did have that incident with Stanley. As you said, uh, Stanley did admit uh, that there was content and uh, he was at fault there, but that is okay. And like you said as well, um, this is these tra it's wet out there and that corner in particular where we did see those two make contact is a very very uh difficult corner to get completely right out there so understandable why uh those two may have crashed at that section but that does mean they'll be surging through the pack and as you said uh percy's quite quick so i think we'll have a very nice little comeback for for him as well now we do know Tapaxter as well a very quick driver as you mentioned he could be on the fly as well and then what about porchy dude joined during qualifying great driver as well i'm actually not sure what car he is in uh since he did qualify uh he did join during the qualifying session did you see exactly what car porch dude is in or is he in the 1991 mclaren he it looked like to me he was in the 19 uh 1990 um mclaren um it was slightly different bodywork um different wheels so yeah it was either the earlier uh, well yeah i would say it was the 1990 if i if, if i think off correctly but it definitely wasn't the same car. Okay, well, good to know. Uh, at least it's the McLaren, so uh, we, we will have a full <laughs> McLaren grid out there. Uh, hopefully, he'll be able to continue the basis. Oh, Tasmanian spins, and his car is out. I was riding on board with him. His tire just completely came off, and that McLaren, and there's a wheel spinning in the middle of the track. That is in between turn three and turn four, that is. Uh, drivers may have some issues coming through that section. Is there anyone out there that uh, could hit that tire? Don't think so. As But he is on pole. That is Formula Forzan. Uh, I said, actually, that's his. That was his previous name. But that is Forzan 96. I do did go P2. Vapor Noah did did go P3, and then Brooksy uh, stayed in the pits to go P4. And that looks to be qualifying over, unless anyone else you see on track could improve. Uh, not at all, no, because I've just seen a Forzan. Okay, well, very interesting to see. That looks like qualifying is over. Uh, Forzan will take home the pole position, and that is very interesting as well to see uh, from the McLaren driver. And uh, oh, is that? I actually, I think Blin just managed to pinch um, pole at, right at the end there. Oh, he did? Huh? How he did? did. <laughs> Whoa! I didn't even see that. It looked. It, I'll be. It, it was coming through turn 13, 14. It looked like he was uh, coming off the gas a little bit there, but. He actually uh, put in a very good time. And yeah, that confirms the list there. Uh, Portugal is in the 1990 McLaren MP4. Oh, well, very interesting. Which, so yeah, oh, go ahead, sorry. Not too, it's not too bad car. It's, uh, Senna did actually drive that at some point. So it will be still considered a Senna GP car as uh, Ayrton Senna did drive that car, as you mentioned. So good to see that. Uh, at least he is in the McLaren. Uh, maybe a little bit down on power. So we may see Portugal maybe struggling with the power uh, or down on uh, performance, I want to say. That's the better word for it. Uh, but it doesn't mean that he's out of uh, the race. He still will have, hopefully, a chance to fight for the top positions. Uh, but I got to say, uh, and hopefully we can talk about this for just a little bit, as it is a dry race. So that will see... Uh, uh, a lot of these guys um, have a nice little fight, so good to see that. Um, but I gotta quickly talk about Blind Machine's pole. That was out of the book, as you said. He came off the gas, and I thought that was over. I thought he, I thought he was going in the pit lane. I don't know what you thought there, uh, but I, he got I a pole. I thought the exact same. He absolutely fantastic. 
Yeah, he, he, put, he must have put in a fantastic lap together. He, he, well, all, I think all drivers actually really did a fantastic uh, few laps there. Crazy to think that, uh, yeah, just with the... Sl it looked slow, but it was fast in a way. So very interesting to see that. Uh, so that is uh, how that worked out. Qualifying is over, though. We're now into our 25% race. We do have a formation lap, so that is good. Uh, so we have 18 laps of the Grand Prix. We can take a look at all these guys and see uh, who will end up on top uh, in today's race, so the formation is out. I'm gonna quickly do the rundown on the grid if you don't mind, unless you want to do it. Do you want to do the the rundown? Uh, you go, you go, you go for it. Okay, so it looks like Blind Machine has taken pole at the last second of qualifying. He'll start on pole uh, with that McLaren MP-6, uh, I do believe that is the name of it. And then we got Forzan alongside him on uh, that row. I think Forzan may have been a little disappointed uh, that he was only able to get second, uh, just the last second with Blind going P1. Vapor Noah uh, gets his best qualifying of Classic Cup going P3 alongside Booksy, who starts off uh, his first Classic Cup race in P4. Uh, the championship leader or championship contender of Classic Cup Group 1. Tasmanian Devil is in P5 alongside Stanley. Uh, so let's see how those two play out. And I know both those drivers are very quick. So let's see if they can uh, make their way through the field up into the points. And then we got RBR uh, Percy in that McLaren as well. Let's see what he can do. You said he's very quick and uh, he's got the Paxter alongside and both drivers will be fighting uh, to get some good points as well. And then rounding off the grid uh, for our nine drivers here today is Porch Dude in that 1990 McLaren. And of course he is a little bit down on performance, but he will, uh, I'm sure, definitely give us a great performance on track. But the formation lap has ended. It looks like the race is just about to start. So before we go into the race, uh, Fair, do you have anything to say before we uh, head into our phenomenal Grand Prix? Uh, not at all. I just, I just had a, a little look at the uh, predictive uh, tire strategy, and it does look like a, a zero stop or one stop is the options that they were given. Uh, I'd definitely go for the one stop anyway, mid mid race. Get yourself some fresh rubber and keep the race going. Well, we'll definitely have to see how this works out. Here we go. Classic Cup is back. Classic Corsa Cup is at Brazil for the Senna GP. It's five red lights out in these 1990 McLarens, and there's already a glitch. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What has happened? Okay. Uh, a little bit of glitch, but there we go. The five red lights are out, and uh, Blin Machine uh, looks to have lost the lead because that, I think, is Forzan up into P2 now, or that would be actually P1. Taz has had a great start as well. Looks to be third place for him, but look at that. Vapor No trying to get ahead of that McLaren there. Uh, looks like Pressy has had a great start as well. To Paxter down to P7. Uh, it looks like Booksy has moved down some positions, and Stanley uh, has also moved down some positions as Booksy has left the session. Not sure what that was all about. Yeah, I think it was just a, a matter of a, a bit of a, a glitch at the moment, uh, which has caused uh, Booksy to drop Ooh. out. And a uh, quick little thing we just saw there, Blim Machine went down the inside of the race leader, but uh, went too deep, made a little bit of contact as well. Thankfully, uh, no crash out for both drivers. So Forzan still leads the Grand Prix. Taz in now second place. Uh, and then it looks like, or sorry, Blin in second place. Taz in third. A little bit of glitch with the standings right now. Sorry about that, guys. I'm not sure what the glitch was all about. I do believe that might be a Porchy Dude in P2, that is. Uh, a little bit of glitch with his car. Unfortunately, I don't... I don't think he's in the session anymore, so unfortunate to see that. It uh, looks like also Booksy might be out of the session as well. Um, Ferret, since you have uh, if you have his friend, uh, your your friend on PSN uh, to him, do you think you could send him an invite real quickly so we can get it back in the session? Well, I'm already on it. Awesome. Thank you so much. And it uh, looks like we just had to Paxter, who just went off at the first turn. I think he had a glitch, uh, maybe a lockup. These guys are still getting used to these cars, but we see a long train of those McLaren 1991 cars go down that uh, straight, which usually has DRS in the 2020 cars. As we do have, I do believe that's uh, Percy trying to make a move on Vapor Noah. So a nice little battle for P4. And then up the table as well, we got Taz versus Blin versus Forzen. Nice battle for P1, P2, P3. Yeah, I just seen Stanley uh, at the back at the moment. He uh, he went off really wide at turn six. Um, unfortunately, it, it does mean he's dropped a bit of a gap. And even though Brooksy is still AI'd at the moment, he's closed that. Uh, he's 
his AI has closed that gap. So once he joins a bit, uh, he has joined us. So he is now in the battle with Stanley. That's good. So yeah, Booksy back in the race. Uh, great to see him back in the session. Uh, and like you said, he's in that little battle with Stanley who had a, a little bit of an issue at that turn that you did mention. Uh, so both drivers will uh, be fighting for P8. Hopefully they can catch back up into the top of the pack as we still have that nice little battle for the top positions at the moment. The one, two, and three are just sitting nice and comfortably. And then we got four and five uh, also sitting a nice little P4 and P5 for the uh, McLarens. Of course, these are all the same car. I don't know why I keep saying uh, for that team because they're all the same car. Uh, anyway, though, yeah, Percy versus Noah. I see that's a n nice little battle. Now, I think you know Percy more as is his, his first race in uh, Classic Cup. I know uh, Noah probably a little bit more. Both drivers, I gotta say, what I've seen on track are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, is Percy a nice uh, overtaker? Do you think he'll be able to get past Noah pretty easily? Well, he's, he's quite, uh, Percy's quite patient. He'll, uh, he'll wait for that uh, the correct time to make the move. Uh, with the Classic cars, they don't have the advantage of DRS, so it's all about Percy's uh, racecraft, really, to see where, where and when he can make that move happen. Gotta agree with you on that. Uh, I've been seeing Percy's pace at the moment. He's nice and clean. Uh, I think he knows to pick these battles, especially in these cars. He's the other side of Purple Sector in Sector 2. He's absolutely flying on uh, in these classic cars. So great to see it for his first time here at Classic Cup. Taz is struggling. Have you noticed that? He's struggling a little bit, uh, losing a lot of place to Blin, who's now trying to make the move on Formula Forzan, who seems to be glitching quite a bit uh, as Blin's at the fast lap of the race. Uh, but a nice little battle for P1, P2, and P3. And Blin just loses it out there at uh, turn one, unfortunately, which means that oh. Forza has got a bit of a gap. And Viper's just jumped, made that jump. And Taz is making a battle. And Percy's just basically leapfrogged them into third. Absolutely fantastic move between uh, with Viper and Percy there. It's a fantastic move, uh, battling with these. Yeah, both drivers were sitting uh, P4 and P5, if I'm not mistaken, and the battle with Blin and Taz and Forzan as well uh, made those three uh, make a little bit of mistakes, and so Percy and Noah just literally said, thank you very much, that's P2 and P3, and into the points for both drivers. So, uh, really interested to see. I think Blin struggled to come off that little mistake that he did have at turn one, because there was a little bit of contact with him and Taz. Uh, Taz tried to avoid it by going uh, wide, and that resulted in him pu being pushed down to P5 in this race. Now, Taz has got to get some points if he's going to close up to, uh, this is weird to say, but close up to me, who uh, me and him are battling for the championship for Group 1, so hopefully Taz will be able to get up there and get some mega points, but we do have Percy now trying to go on Noah uh, for P2 in the race. Yeah, he's got the, he's got a very good run on him. Let's see how he dares does there. Oh, fantastic battle in here between the two drivers. Noah covers the inside, a little bit of wheel-to-wheel -to -wheel touch in there, but absolutely fantastic battle on and both cars still on the track, still battling strong. Fantastic racing by both drivers. Percy just judged that very well to get out of the way from Noah. Noah is again covering the line. Gives uh, Percy a bit of room. Percy's absolutely picking his battles right here. He knows that uh, he can't make the move quite yet, but he's got way better line out of that. Is he going to go side by side with Noah? Oh, a little bit of grass rubbing there by the McLaren, but it looks like he's going to go side by side. He has to uh, back out of that one, and it looks like Percy has to wait for another day, but he's going to go round the outside of his fellow teammate in that other McLaren. Is Noah going to keep ahead? It looks like he does. Percy had to back out of that one. Now here comes Blin to try and get back up into where he was, and Taz as well, and further down the table is to Paxter, and uh, I do believe Booksy's trying to catch up as well, and, t and Stanley as well. So a huge uh, fight for the podiums here. Yeah, I can could, I could see this battle, here. This battle is going to be happen all the way around this race. We've got five laps down. We've got 13 to go, and it's still absolutely anybody's race. It really is at this moment, and it looks like Percy's got the best chance to take P2 and get further up to try and challenge for the race win, but Noah breaks later. There goes Percy, uh, Percy sorry, and uh, he's going to actually try and go for the switchback maneuver. Better line out of there. Here comes Percy to try and overtake Noah. Got to remember, Blin is right behind these guys as well, but Noah's defending as much as he can. Uh, Percy's going to go side by side with the McLaren as they have been battling 
pretty much all race and uh, Percy and Noah side by side almost making contact and these two are just continuing to battle looks like Percy gets ahead into P2 and uh, we still have that nice little battle for P4 and P5 because Blaine is also catching up to these guys absolutely fantastic it was a nice little battle to see in between them two touching is another uh, an inevitable on a circuit with it being so tight but the both drivers gave gave as much respect as they could to each other and what a uh, what a battle we've just seen as Blin is now battling with Taz yeah, he is. Yeah, Taz went for the dive bomb on Blin. Uh, he goes very wide there, too. Uh, Blin defending as much as he can. Oh, as Taz locks up a little bit. Uh, we got to say, these cards are very new to everyone, so that's why uh, these guys are making little mistakes every once in a while. Great to see uh, these guys pushing as hard as they can, though. Uh, but as you said, yeah, Taz and Blin, that's the closest battle I think we see on track. Well, I've got to say, say that uh, Brooksy has taken half a second on that last lap out of the gap between himself and Tape. Uh, past there so uh, basically if he carries on at this rate he could be catching up by the end of the uh, end of the race yeah he could be really on uh, the, the back of these this little pack here for P3 I think this is as uh, Percy's kind of uh, going out and trying to catch Forzan now but yeah Booksy really put it in the pace right now as you said uh, he's starting to reel these guys in so Booksy could be on the back of these guys and wouldn't that be a story if he got up into the podium which would be the points as well uh, after leaving the session and coming back we're just gonna have to wait and see how that comes out but uh, two laps left until the halfway mark now now, we didn't really talk about this quite a bit, uh, but I quickly want to talk about uh, tire strategy, if you don't mind. Now, you said uh, it was about maybe a these guys could go to the end of the race or they could pit. What would you guys say? Uh, what, what would you say that these guys are? Uh, what what? Basically, what I'm saying is uh, what tire strategy do you think these guys are going for? Do you think they're going to pit or do you think they're going to stay up? See, that's that's all depends on the drivers themselves, because if if. You if you're a driver that can nurse those tires all the way to the end, you'd have to do it from the beginning. You'd have to nurse them. A lot of these drivers have been battling hard, so I would expect them all to be coming into the pits at some point. I have to agree with you on that one. Uh, these guys are really battling hard, as you said. Oh, and, oh. Taz goes. What? Sorry, Taz goes wide at turn three. Oh, he's won. And... Oh no! Luckily, oh, he's let. He says he's left the session. Oh, unfortunately, don't like seeing that. Absolutely not. Yeah, that's exactly what we don't want to see. Looks like Taz must have lost the car. Did you see what happened? I actually wasn't on board with that. Sorry about that. Yeah, he went. He went. It's like I jumped on board just as he went wide at turn three when he tried to gather himself back on. He just kind of mm -hmm. oversteered and lost the back end. Interesting. So unfortunate to see that from Tasmanian Devil. That's really uh, going to hurt his performance uh, when it comes to the championship. Actually, it won't hurt him that much when it comes to points because uh, these guys are only scoring a max uh, three points in the Grand Prix. Uh, but unfortunate to see that uh, from Taz. Uh, looks like he'll have to fight for another day. Hopefully, he'll be back at the next round uh, for the fin finale of Classic Cup. Uh, unfortunate to see that. But anyway, uh, it looks like we still have a battle for P3. Blin versus Noah. Uh, where is Blin going to go? It looks like he's going to go to the outside. Yeah, that's an absolutely fantastic run by Blin. Has a lot of, uh, faster line around the outside of here, turn one. And turn two, it just seals the deal for him. And he's uh, nicely there, sitting in third, as Noah now has to defend against Tay Paxter. Yeah, Tapaxter back in this battle now, and uh, he's really fighting for the mega points here today uh, for the team. And so he's going to try and fight against Noah and Blin, I'm assuming, pretty soon. Uh, I think Noah may be starting to struggle in the tires as he's been fighting uh, pretty much all race with all these guys side by side. That could have hurt his tires, as uh, we've been saying kind of bit. As Tapaxter goes super wide there, I was right on board with him. Looks like he's just having a lot of issues. Uh, so he will hopefully... Um, He's gonna, he, of course, he corrected that maneuver, so now he's back all over the back of these guys. So we still have that nice little battle between P3, P4, and P5. Yeah, it's, a, it's an absolutely fantastic race for her so far. See, when, you, when you've got limited numbers, you're not too sure where uh, it could go one or two ways. You can either have a really good race like we've got right now, or it could be really stretched out. And uh, thankfully, all these drivers are quite competitive, so they've all in there for the battle 
Yeah, they really are. Uh, it is nice and competitive. Uh, these guys all are. Uh, nice little grid we're having. Nice little race we're having. Uh, very clean, I gotta say. Uh, not much corner cutting. Uh, so that's great to see as well. Um, these guys are really showing what they are, what performance they have. And uh, it's nice to see. And I gotta say, uh, for all the viewers out there, um, you may not know, but this is Group 1 and Group 2. I think I said it at the very beginning. Uh, so this is drivers from Group 1 and Group 2. We've um, combined both races and uh, we've kind of put it into one race. Uh, and there was a little bit of a difference uh, or a mix up of what happened last week. We uh, got rid of, uh, for group two, we got rid of two or three of the races and just went straight into the finale. So we'd end on the exact same date for both groups. Uh, so basically they're both on the same timeline now. And that's why we made these two groups on the same um, time now. So great to see it from all these guys coming in. And uh, of course with different grids, uh, mashing up and still fighting wheel to wheel with different people that are not really familiar with when it comes to racing wheel to wheel with uh, So great to see great action from these guys and it's really turning into a very competitive race Yeah, absolutely fantastic and it's like we are seeing a, little, a few little gaps opening up now uh, so This is what they what they call the middle uh, the middle window where things start to uh, open up and start to settle um, and it normally closes back in just about four, five, uh, five laps up from the end. So we've got a few laps of quiet moments, just one or two battles. Oh, and look, at there's another battle right now. It looks like uh, Vapor Noah on Blade. Oh, he's going to go down the inside. Here comes the driver uh, from McLaren, of course. And Blinn will stay ahead. It looks like a little bit of pinching as well. Vapor Noah had to back out of that one. The Puckster's now over the back as well. So that battle for P4 and P3 uh, is really, really spicy at this moment. As Stanley has left the session. I do believe that is just because he is really far down. Uh, hopefully, that was not a glitch. Uh, if that isn't, we can quickly give him an invite. Uh, but yeah, interesting to see uh, all this battling happening and uh, all the other things we've been seeing on track. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely fantastic battling between these drivers. Um, as you see, Tapax, it's, it's just looking, uh, looking, waiting for that mistake by uh, Noah to make his move. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's very interesting to see uh, this little battle we're seeing right now. Uh, Tapaxter really, uh, like you said, just kind of waiting for Noah to make the move on maybe Blinn. Uh, maybe they're, they are going to, maybe Tapaxter. Uh, let me know if you're following along with this, actually, because I'm thinking, um, is Noah and, or is Tapaxter maybe waiting for Blinn and Noah to maybe make a mistake because these cars are so unfamiliar? Uh, and then maybe he just sweeps through. Uh, kind of like what happened with Blinn and Taz, where Noah and Percy kind of just, uh, went through the field and kind of just said thank you very much. Do you think he's doing the same thing? Uh, that's, that is possibly the uh, the idea behind uh, Joe, uh, behind this uh, thought process uh, because it's it, with Mayor Brazil you've got to wait for the mistake and if you're going to let the two people in front of you battle away to make the mistake and take both of them at the same time then that's, that is something you could capitalise on definitely so maybe he is, uh, that is a good thought process there and hopefully you might see the well, I wouldn't say hopefully we might see drivers go off, but hopefully we can see some more battling on the results of those thoughts. Yeah, we'll see how this works out uh, with all these guys. Uh, if there's going to be some more battling on track, I'm assuming there will be because uh, we're seeing a nice little battle between all these guys uh, in that P3 range. Uh, something I quickly want to mention is RBR Press, uh, sorry, uh, RBR Percy M8 there in the McLaren, of course. Uh, he's under pressure from Blin Machine. Now, he's lost a lot of time to Forzan. Now, 6.6 .6 seconds. So, he's joined the battle with Blin. Do you think he's maybe struggling on these tires? Or what do you think is going on with uh, Percy at this moment? Well, the, the battles where the battle he had uh, with um, the drivers, Blin, Blin Viper, uh, Pasta, uh, he did uh, could be struggling on those tires because they did put a lot of um, moves in. So Percy might be thinking of uh, jumping in the pits soon to uh, cover that off. That's because Blin is now going wheel to wheel with Percy through turn six. Oh, oh. this contact! Oh, but Blin saves it! Blin saves what it! What a save by Blin! Wow. That oh, was... and there's more contact. That's Blin spinning again, but he saves it again. Oh, and look at this. Tapaxter's been forced a little bit wide. Uh, looks like Tapaxter's going to have to back out of that one. But, uh, I mean, the, the second one was a little bit... Uh, a little bit... The, I mean, the first one was a little bit worse for Blin, but he was able to come out of that 
And the second one, he spun again, but saved the car. Uh, it was a little spin, but uh, saved the car. That was absolutely phenomenal. What's your thoughts on that little save for Blin twice? Absolutely fantastic. The uh, the little bit of wheel to wheel contact going through those corners, where I, I could say just it was going to happen. You could not go through those corners side by side without some kind of touching. These cars could take a little touch to spin out, but Blin, what a driver to catch that. And he is still battling with Noah for fair, fair, absolutely fantastic. Just shows a good spirit and a good driver there to keep going, keep battling like he is. I've raced with Blin many times in league racing. Uh, he's absolutely phenomenal, uh, not just in these classic cars, but in uh, F1 cars as well, in the 2020 F1 cars, of course. Uh, he knows like how to control the car as a racer, and he knows uh, his, his stuff when it comes to commentary as well about how to control the car. And I think that's just down to experience uh, with him uh, trying to catch the car. Uh, so he's really, really consistent with his driving, I think, uh, when it comes to uh, just getting back on track from little mistakes uh, that may have not even been his fault. Uh, he's able to come out of that uh, pretty clean. So well done to, to him uh, for doing that. Race is not over, though. Four laps do remain kind of a short race here today. But of course, it is very exciting. Uh, now, what would you say about Percy? He's kind of walked away with this. Now he's back up into P2 and uh, not under pressure from Blinn. What would you say about that? Yeah, it's exa exactly what he needs. He needs uh, a bit of gap behind him. So uh, basically, uh, Joe, take off the pressure. He'll now start just doing them day or what they call a daily grind. Just keep going because uh, he's now catching up with the ghosted Tasmanian Devil now. So yeah, he's uh, he's going to be uh, focused on that car there, using it as a like a tractor beam to keep himself going. That's a very interesting strategy, and that's uh, something that is actually uh, very possible. So good strategy from Percy there. Uh, he, like you said, he's going to use maybe Taz as a little tractor beam. Uh, good little reference there. Uh, I think that, or not reference, sorry, that's the wrong word. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Sorry, what? Analogy. Analogy, yeah, that, thank you, thank you. Uh, that's the right word. Uh, anyway, though, um, we do have Blin, who is, after that little mistake he did have, is still trying to catch up to Percy. Do you think Blin will be able to catch up to Percy? He's got, three, he's got just over three laps to do so, and he is actually bringing that time down quite quickly, so I can see it happening. I really can. Uh, Blin has got some fantastic lines for these corners. So I am going to expect it very soon. And we've got Tay Paxton now. He's actually making a very fast move on Noah. Whoa, that Absolutely was quick. flying. Almost catches up with uh, Blin there. Absolutely fantastic effort there by Tay Paxton. And this... no Noah's not giving up. He's still there. He's still battling. Absolutely fantastic effort from these drivers. Really is. Yeah, Noah trying to re-overtake to Paxter for... Uh, oh, he's going to send it. Wow, oh, he backs out of that one. To Paxter gives him space. Uh, good moves. It looks like uh, Noah's going to try to re-overtake. Oh, there's not enough space. Uh, but he comes back out of that. Uh, is he going to remain side by side with the Paxter? Uh, Paxter's giving him space, so that's good. Very good racing between all these guys. Uh, it looks like Noah is uh, just all over the back of the Paxter, but can't make the move quite yet. Oh, the Paxter goes very wide. That could make the move uh, for Noah to try and get in on the action for P4 in this race. And uh, just really, really clean driving by both of these guys. Uh, great to see it. Uh, but I got to say real quickly, uh, this is kind of a side topic from the battle we've been seeing. The slipstream is absolutely insane for around here. Did you see how quick Tapaxter closed up on Noah during that straight? Absolutely, yeah, I agree with you. That that was phenomenal. The uh, I don't, I think it's more that down to like the uh, getting into that slipstream, going through those corners. Absolutely fantastic to actually do that and used it to full effect to get past them. Really did. It's absolutely insane to see the slipstream uh, being so perfect and so. Uh, like just consistent when it comes to uh, getting slipstream out of the car and uh, raw power, I gotta say. <laughs> uh, but it looks like that slipstream is gonna be uh, used once again as uh, Noah's gonna try and make a move. Yeah, I've just, I've just like uh, I've just seen that uh, Brooksy actually got the fastest lap last lap with an eighteen uh, one eighteen point two. Oh wow! That's a brilliant lap, brilliant lap there, um, and he's actually put himself in a position where. If, he, if we had a few more laps, he would actually would be in the battle with Tay Baxter and Noah because he is 
in a brief age uh, within breathing space of him he really is right now uh you're absolutely correct with that one uh booksy is really flying at now and just i i gotta say uh just what could have been uh after the mistake that or not it was not his mistake at all it was an error with the session that uh got him technically kicked out of the law uh, the, the lobby uh thankfully we we're able to get uh him um back into the session but what could have been oh yellow flag is that is uh noah that is noah going slowly oh Oh, it looks like he's got no fuel. No. No way. How is that possible? I have never seen that uh, so early in this race. It's almost an entire lap uh, before the fuel has gone out. Well, uh, Viper, did, uh, he has been battling so hard, so he will be putting the prayer foot down a little bit earlier than other drivers. Uh, so... I could see, understand why it happened. It's just unfortunate that it did happen. But like, I would, I've got to be honest. This race is uh, feels like it's over before even uh, Joe fully got into it. I gotta agree with you. Yeah, we've had a, a very interesting Grand Prix here today. Uh, it's been really short. Uh, but I think we're going to have a clear number one here. Forzan has been on top the entire Grand Prix. Uh, we've had absolutely phenomenal racing here today at Classic Corsa Cup. And it looks like Formula Forzan, or Forzan, that's his name now, is going to take home the win for the Senna GP. He comes across the line to take that special win uh, for the racer today. Oh, oh, oh. oh wow. Percy. Fast as lap 117.9. Because Forzan got it on a lap earlier, and Percy just proper put in a stint there. Absolutely fantastic. To be honest right now, I know our point system is 3-2-1 uh, for first, second, and third. I honestly want to give fastest lap to this man right here. He's just... That is beyond what we've expected for fastest lap. I was thinking 119, 118.5, somewhere around there. He's just gone a 117.9. That is extremely quick. And remember, this is his first race in Classic Corsa Cup. Great racing uh, and great performance by Percy and the rest of the drivers as well. See, I will go, I've got to say, like, with the drivers of the, the usual league, would have had a bit of time to think about these cars before, maybe got a bit of practice in. These guys, I, I asked them to join us uh, well, just about 20 minutes before we even started, really. Um, I just uh, asked them if they was, uh, if they fancied it, because just to get get them in to try and see how they do. And they've done both, Percy and Bear Brooks. He's done great to battle with the, the, the top drivers that you have at this league. Yeah, they really are. Uh, great to see them in the league. We want uh, new drivers in. Uh, great to see uh, them performing well as rest of uh, the entire field as well. Forzan takes the win for Classic Corsa Cup here today in these 1991 McLaren MP-6s. And uh, yeah, great racing by everyone. Uh, great to see these two leagues combined with uh, drivers from one league, uh, from, from Group 1 and drivers from group two, and then just other drivers that were able to get in here at the last second. Great to see everyone out there on track. Uh, a small grid, but I got to say, that was well worth it. Absolutely brilliant, Sam. I, I don't normally enjoy uh, Brazil, but this uh, race was absolutely fantastic uh, to watch. Definitely got to agree with you. Uh, that was absolutely phenomenal to see uh, these guys out on track, uh, especially in these cars are so unpredictable. They were able to put on a immense pleasure of uh, racing to watch uh, from everyone. Uh, so an incredible result. Got to say congrats to all our drivers out there. Um, but I think that's got to be it. I know this was a short one, viewers, but uh, I think that was well uh, worth the watch. I got to say, uh, from our perspectives and your guys's, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, but, Farrah, do you have anything else to say before we end off Classic Corsa Cup? Well, I'll be honest. I, I know with my commentary, I know we've thrown a load of facts, a little bit of corners. We had no time for that because there's so much battling going on. But today it was absolutely fantastic. So, thank you for having me here tonight. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining. Always a pleasure to commentate. I think that was our first time commentating together, and it absolutely was so so much fun. Uh, I was about to race, and then uh, got the call up to commentate with you. I'm super glad I was able to do that. Uh, anyway, though, I think that is going to be it from myself and Ferret. We're going to be signing off here today. Uh, viewers, thank you so much for watching the Classic Corsa Cup race of Group 1 and Group 2 com combination. Uh, we will see you next time, though, for the finale of Classic Corsa Cup. Group 1 and Group 2 will return to their uh, respective tiers uh, for the finales of that Grand Prix. Group 1, the championship fight goes down between two drivers, Tasmanian Devil and myself, uh, for the championship. Who will win that? We're definitely going to have to wait and see. Uh, for Group 2, we have a nice little championship fight as well. Do you believe Chalawalta is leading that? Can he take home the first ever Group 2 uh, championship race victory? Um, we'll see how that works out. So join us next time for Brazil. That will be 2010 cars. So back to our original 2010 cars. And then that will be it of Season 2. Uh, so join us next time. Uh, but for myself and Ferret, that is it from Classic Course of the Cup. That was the Senna GP Round 13 of Group 1 and Round 6 of Group 2. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.